In this video, we're going to look at how to use stack key to create a randomization distribution and to find a p-value. So we're going to be working with this section in stack key. Notice it says randomization hypothesis test. So the first thing you need to do is decide which type of parameter you're working with. And so we've got single mean, single proportion, difference in means, difference in proportion, slope and correlation. Let's assume that we're going to work with a single mean, so you would click here. And notice this, this looks very similar to when we created the sampling distributions and um, the bootstrap distributions. So the first thing we need to do is decide which data set we're going to work with. We could work with one of the pre-built data sets or you may need to edit data and enter your own data. We're going to work with this body temperature data. Notice that the summary of the data is given here in the original sample. So we see that from this sample we had a statistic of 98.26. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need to decide um, what the value under the null hypothesis is. So before ever coming into StatKey to create the randomization distribution, you need to have written out your null and alternative hypothesis. So whatever value you have mu equal to under the null, you're going to place that value right here. So for this particular hypothesis, they had HO, where mu is equal to 98.6. Once you've set your null hypothesis, you can go through and generate your samples. So looking here, we have a randomization distribution. Notice that the randomization distribution is approximately bell-shaped. We know that randomization distributions are centered under the null at 98.6. And so see the null is 98.6 and the distribution is centered there. And then finally, the standard error or the standard deviation of the distribution is equal to the value of the standard error assuming that the null is true. So now that we have the randomization distribution, we know what statistics look like when the null is true, so we can find our p-value. Next, to find your p-value, you need to decide if you have a left tail, two tail, or a right tail test. You can find that by looking at the alternative hypothesis. So again, you need to have written down what HO and HA are before starting this. So let's assume that we had a two tail test, so you click on two tail. Next, what we're going to do, remember this was our statistic from our original sample, this 98.26. We're going to enter that as an endpoint down here to figure out how extreme this statistic is. So notice that 98.26 occurs to the left of 98.6. So I'm going to click here at the endpoint and I'm going to enter 98.26. Any value to the left or to the right is going to be considered extreme. So notice in this case, 98.26 is so far to the left that we actually don't even see any of the dots in red. So in this case, our p-value is going to be this area here plus this area here, which is approximately zero. So for this case, our p-value is approximately zero. Now just for illustration, let's assume that instead our observed statistic was 98.4. Again, you always place your statistic below the line as an endpoint. So we're going to do 98.4. Now if our statistic has been this, again, remember that the p-value is the proportion of all of the red dots, and StatKey calculates that for you. We see that 0 0.031 was on this side, and 0 0.031 was on this side, so we need to add those two together, and we would find a p-value of 0 0.062. Now we could do this exact same process for different types of parameters, so if you go back to StatKey, and again, remember for randomization distribution, you're in this section, we could look at a difference in means and notice that the process is going to be exactly the same. You're going to either choose one of the pre-loaded data sets or you're going to enter your own. Now under the null hypothesis, whenever we work with a difference in means, we're always assuming that the two means are the same, so you don't have to change the value under the null for this case, but you would go through and generate your samples. 
Then to find your p-value, you decide if you're looking at a left tail, two tail, or right tail. And you'll know this by looking at your alternative hypothesis. So let's say we had a right tail in this case. Notice our observed statistic is 0.79. You're always going to place your observed statistic down below. And then your p-value is going to be this area in red. So for this case, since we only have the one tail, our p-value is 0 0.026.